charity so that uh, we can continue our ministry that way. <laughs> that being said, let's get to the shit face jokes. <laughs> good to be doing stand-up comedy again, especially in front of a crowd, because I had one of the worst possible problems ever. I did a show in Ohio, and this lady came up to me, and she said, oh my gosh, Kyle, you did such a good job, but you look just like a gay Clay Aiken. <laughs> I instantly don't like you people now. There's nothing funny about that at all. What the hell does a straight clay eat? <laughs> I mean, homosexuality is a huge tendency today in popular culture. We read about it even here on campus in our UNCG uh, paper. <laughs> There were four columns about homosexuality. By the time I finish reading that paper, I feel like I should go out and touch a dick. <laughs> but apart from that, the last issue said that science is looking for the gay gene. And I can save them the trouble. They're a gap. <laughs> Those are where the gay jeans are. You know it. I'm not stupid. You know how this guy asked me, he said, you know what, Kyle? You dress like a gay guy. When did you come out of the closet? As if there's a closet that all gay people really come out of. Is there? I want to know where it is. <laughs> I'm not coming out gay, but I'll go in to get a shirt. Those fuckers do dress nice. <laughs> Man, I guess I have gay tendencies. I like to dress nice. My hair has to be perfect. And hell, I will never, ever, ever miss an episode of Trading Spaces. You know what? The only thing wrong with that program is the name, and I wrote TLC for what I think it should be. I think it should be called Me and This Fag Are Gonna Fuck Up Your House. <laughs> they weren't as enthused as you guys are. Psychics, who believe in them? <laughs> Interesting today, I, I tried to date a psychic. I believe in him. I tried to date one. We met. She looked at me and she said, You drunk bastard, cheating fucker, goodbye. <laughs> I said, Wow, she's good. 
I was reading the paper though the other day where a psychic got hit by a train. <laughs> what the fuck is that? You know, if you're a psychic, how do you not wake up and you do your morning reading or whatever and say some big metal object's gonna run the fuck? <laughs> believe in it really I really don't and you know what I can prove it right now unless there's a national psychic holiday where the fuck were you were on 9-11 <laughs> exactly <laughs> nobody can say shit no psychic felt it necessary to call the government and say hey you're gonna have a problem today <laughs> You know, we gotta love our government. Our government's been through a lot, like the KKK. <laughs> you know what? I fucking hate racism. I fucking hate it. And you know what? We got this group, the KKK, who, who's trying to come on campus or whatever and scare us. And then they dress up in these all white robes and they're, they're white hoods. And we're supposed to be intimidated because you look like a ghost. <laughs> No, you fucking moron. You look like a crayon. <laughs> the government's also taken into its hands the terror alert system by using colors. <laughs> Fine. What the hell do you do if you're colorblind? <laughs> What's a terror alert today, baby? Nah, fuck it, I don't know. <laughs> the biggest thing, though, that they've tried to do is cut down on drivers who fall asleep at the wheel. So what have they done? They've put grooves in the side of the road designed to wake you up should you pass over them. <laughs> Great. Grooves designed to wake me up to see my impending doom. <laughs> We're on fire, and we're going over this cliff. <laughs> I know, dear. I sure am glad we're up for this. <laughs> Bush called it Operation Groovy. <laughs> it didn't exactly work out as uh, he planned. <laughs> I'm from Level Cross, North Carolina. <laughs> you know what that's home to? <laughs> Thank you. A level cross rodeo. <laughs> Has anybody been to a rodeo by Randall a ball? <laughs> Listen, for the rest of you, if your friends ever invite you to a rodeo, punch them in the face that you're not your friend. You can be better off watching reruns of the Lifetime Channel with the Golden Girls. <laughs> true. You know, I researched on the internet who came up with the rodeo, and I, and I could only come up with one figure. Somebody who was genius enough to come up with the internet itself. That's right. Al Gore. <laughs> he was pissed off. Yeah, he was. He was pissed off in Texas. He lost the election to Bush. Bush fans? <laughs> Try to follow me here. He lost the election. He's out. He's steaming. He's out for a walk. He wants to walk off the election he just lost. He stops in front of a bull. And he looks at the bull and he says, You know what? I'm going to strap a dumb cowboy to you. And I'm going to see what the fuck happens. <laughs> Just one problem. So he called up his good buddy, Bill Clinton. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Does that mean you like Bill? Does that mean you want to be Monica? Because that wasn't just a, ow, oh, Bill Clinton. That was a, ow, oh, ow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a 
So anyway, he calls Bill Clinton. He calls Bill Clinton up and he says, Bill, I got a problem. You know, once the cowboy has been bucked off or either impaled, who's going to corral the beast back to its pen? And Bill Clinton said, I know somebody scary enough. Hiller. <laughs> And this is why you haven't seen Bill on TV in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Knowing that couldn't work, he decided to, well, break down and call the guy who had beat him, George W., because he's a cowboy. He wanted to know something scary enough for a cowboy. So he called up George W., and he's like, look, I got a problem. Once this guy gets bucked off, what's going to be scary enough to corral him back to the pen? And because our president, God bless him, <laughs> says the first thing that comes to his mind, no matter what it is, <laughs> said, clowns, dude. <laughs> clowns. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Who the fuck says clowns? They're there. How do you apply for this position? <laughs> Are you the last clown that couldn't fit in that fucking clown car? <laughs> you should have trained in Mexico, amigo. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I really like you guys. <laughs> You're definitely very funny. So, uh... Or out somewhere, you know, like at a restaurant or whatever. Our best friend, and don't don't call me a liar on this, because you know what? Everybody wishes as they leave, they had a quarter in their pocket for that dead gum gumball machine. <laughs> you know, and you take your gum you know, or, or your quarter and you stick it in the slot and you turn it and you watch it twirl. <laughs> goes up and you follow it because you're an idiot. <laughs> you want to slide down and it slides down this way and back this way. I always want that fucking gumball. <laughs> and then it hits the floor. <laughs> now we are in a predicament, ladies and gentlemen. Do we pick it up and eat it? Or do we throw it away? Here's the mindset of the majority of you. You reach up, you grab the gumball, and you've got it just like this. And you're like, you know what? Nobody saw it. I'm going to fucking eat it. And you get it right to your lips. And then you hear it. chip on my fraternity house floor. Oh! Amen, exactly. That I reach down in five seconds and wait before bacterial Armageddon could control me. <laughs> it's a ritual, you know, like you have prayer, you have to call it. I wouldn't pick that chip up off my fraternity floor and say, <laughs> fuck that. Five second rule, bitches. Do the gay metrosexual walk, snap my fingers and whack. <laughs> you know what? I am king for a day right there. 
Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> How many people have been to the health center here on campus? <laughs> You know, the first time that you go is because you sneeze a lot. Let me ask you guys a question. Because I've wondered this myself because I do it. Why do we sneeze into tissue and then open it up to see what's there? <laughs> I felt it come out. Why do I need to see? Playing sneeze and go see? Nobody can answer why, but you all do it. I was in Spencer's the other day. Here's another. Thank you. Even though I have nothing to do with Spencer's, thank you. Here's another question I have. I was looking through the aisles, and I've seen the most interesting object I've ever seen in my life. A butt plug. A cork to fit your asshole. <laughs> now, some of you are cackling, but I hope the rest of you are wondering, what the fuck do you need one of those for? <laughs> Anybody ever heard of Gilbert Syndrome? Well, let, let's do a little lesson here. Gilbert, obviously, was a uh, unfortunate son of a bitch. <laughs> because he would eat things and couldn't shit this way. Instead, it came out this way. <coughs> right. He shit out of his mouth. <laughs> he was the king of shit talking. <laughs> Let me ask you guys something. Can you buy one of these butt plugs? I thought about it. I'm going to show you guys something because I feel that we have a connection. I have frequent diarrhea. And you know what? I don't care if you wanted to know that or not. So I thought a butt plug might do me some good. <laughs> Closest to the gay experience I've ever felt. Didn't want to go any further. But I had a little mix up. You see, apparently, when you plug up diarrhea, pressure mounts. Yellowstone Park. <laughs> that cork knocked out the freaky chick behind me. <laughs> and guys are the weird gothic kids sitting next to her. <laughs> but it was before October 6th and I dropped that class. <laughs> You know, the health center, they're there for you, but no matter where you, no matter what you go for, it's always the same diagnosis. They bring you in to the room, they look at you. Sore throat, sore stomach, bloodshot eyes. You've been having sex, haven't you? <laughs> no asshole, I'm hungover. <laughs> Here's some free condoms and some birth control. Dude, I'm a guy. What am I gonna do with birth control? Duh, it. give it to your girl. Am I the only one that thought that was funny? What am I gonna do, walk up to my girlfriend? Hey, baby. Happy six months. 
say. They have student doctors too. Student doctors. You know what? If we're going to have student doctors, why don't we have student police, student ALE, to get the fuck off my ass when I want to drink a fucking alcoholic beverage? <laughs> I had a student doctor. I went out and needed a shot. I went in. She looked at me, square in the eye, swear to God, and said, Kyle, where do you want the needle? <laughs> now, I am no medical expert. <laughs> but shouldn't you at least be pretending to be? <laughs> Put it where it hurts less and the most effective. And if that doesn't exist, stick it in your own fucking ass. <laughs> and I will laugh. Eventually they put me uh, to a psychiatrist. What's funny about that? My psychiatrist lets me rant and rave and say whatever I want to. Like the boyfriend I'll never have. <laughs> Got a nice cock, though. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> For my troubles, he prescribed me Xanax. Heard some blues. And some claps. <clears throat> Guaranteed ten bucks you've never been prescribed them. <laughs> uh, he told me, he said, Kyle, don't you drink on this medicine. And fuck your world up. <laughs> Look who he's talking to. <laughs> the biggest alcoholic in the Greek system. Like your warning's gonna stop me. <laughs> Asshole. So me and my girlfriend were playing a game of Scrabble. <laughs> And she was winning. So I took my Xanax and I chugged it with a little bit of Vladimir vodka. Don't you know, Vladimir's economical. <laughs> well, in the course of my psychosis because of the mess and the alcohol, I spelled out every girl I'd ever slept with, even the ones I left off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Won the game. And in my celebration, horse kicked her in the mouth. <laughs> Knocking out two teeth. And my only condolence was, don't worry, the money that the tooth fairy will bring will pay our rent. <laughs> you laughed, but I was confident in the tooth fairy. Now. At 3 a.m., I heard a knock at the door. I knew it was the tooth fairy. I open the door, and holy shit, the tooth fairy is one hot pixie. <laughs> Forgetting about my girlfriend for a second. After some heavy convincing and handcuffs, me and the tooth fairy had hot porn star passionate sex on the couch. I was in ecstasy until I saw my girlfriend in the corner of my eye. I don't remember much after that. I woke up in the hospital the next day. The doctor told me the whole story. Apparently, the doctor was right. I should never drink on the medicine. Because Xanax and Vladimir makes you think that your girlfriend's sister is the tooth fairy. <laughs> She dropped that whole rape charge, too. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a big deal. Some of you just laughed at nothing. Are you enjoying yourselves tonight? When I woke up in the hospital, the doctor told me I might need bifocals. <laughs> bifocals are great. If you date somebody with a killer upper body but really fat legs. <laughs> For 
from that moment on, I had sleep troubles. Does anybody here have sleep troubles? Who clapped their hand? You did. What's your name? Eddie. Eddie. What kind of sleep troubles do you have? Uh, just don't sleep and so on the dance. God bless you. <laughs> Who else was not on Xanax and had sleep disorder? Let's get back here. <coughs> yeah, shit. Oh, oh somebody knows my name, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which one of you? Both. Both? Yeah. Are you lesbians? <laughs> Which one of you had the sleep control? <laughs> You, yeah. what'd you have? Just couldn't sleep. <laughs> it's insomnia. How exciting. <laughs> Did anybody try to help you with it? What'd they tell you? They gave me some pills. <laughs> what kind of pills? Lamictal? <laughs> See me after the show. <laughs> You know, I was, uh, I was, I was helped, I guess. People tried to help me with my disorder. <coughs> this one guy told me I should count sheep. So I tried it. Apparently, I found out that night my sheep had A, D, D. <laughs> they didn't understand the concept that they were supposed to jump over that fence one at a time in a nice single file line. <laughs> The little bastards try to jump it all at the same time. <laughs> and to piss me off, 38 through 64 went around it. <laughs> I fired the hell out of those cotton balls. <laughs> Don't feel bad for them, though. I hear they're doing good. They're out filming some mattress commercial. <laughs> When that didn't work, the guy told me I should do something until I'm so exhausted that the only thing I can do is sleep. But all that got me was a raw penis. <laughs> I wasted all mom's lotion. So I started asking my dad and asked my mom. She told me to go to the doctor. I did. He prescribed me some sleeping pills. But that night I found out that sleeping pills and cocaine... Oh, God, it don't mix. <laughs> I was arrested for indecent exposure <laughs> while trying to order a Big Mac at Wendy's. <laughs> All charges were later dropped due to a lack of evidence. <laughs> People laugh at the wrong shit. <laughs> So I have a friend who has a fake eye. Anybody have a friend with a disability? <laughs> Jay Webb, welcome. <laughs> my friend has a fake eye. And oh my God, it's so great to have him around. Like if we're playing beer pong, and one of those stupid freshmen steps on the ball that just knocks you in the stomach and out pops his eye and we continue on. <laughs> I remember this one time we wanted to, we went skydiving. You wanted to go skydiving. You, they, they give you those big goggles to put on. So we go skydiving. Apparently altitude's a bitch. Because this fake guy popped out and looked like one of those lottery balls. <laughs> That wasn't the best, though. He likes the fair. And I like the fair, too. And you know what his favorite ride is? That spaceship that's spinning Well, apparently pressure's a bitch, too. You know, you go in the spaceship, you got the red and black columns all around, and you lean up against them. And it spins until it pressurizes you up. And out pops my fake, my, my friend's fake eye. And he goes spinning around the spaceship. And in our good humor, me and him are looking around going, making bets of where it's been only a fat girl, black 32. 
He likes music, he does. But you know what? I hate music nowadays. I do. Anybody else hate music nowadays? What's <laughs> your subject? Huh? Well, let me just try to listen. Here's what our society is doing, okay? Let me, let me tell you what our society is doing. Our society, right? Me and you here together. On the count of three, I want everybody to say fuck. Ready? One, two, three. Fuck! Okay. We agree that fuck is a word and we can use it. But you know what the radio station says? Uh-uh. Little Johnny might not like that. So you know what we'll do instead? We'll just replace it with the sound. The sound of fucking. <laughs> so now you hear bottom rows gold and the top rows. Um. <laughs> Ever since I can't remember, I've been popping my collar, popping, popping my collar, popping, popping my collar. Ever since I can't remember, I've been. Oh. <laughs> These old. <laughs> this song is so great that way. And what's happened to our hard rocking guys, fellas? Fellas, where are they? Where are our hard rocking guys at? You know what? The girls have replaced them. Now girls are hardcore. Kelly Clarkson, Christina Aguilera. Fucking right. <laughs> Now we've got guys like James Blunt. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> With a guy that says, so you had a bad day. <laughs> Quit fucking reminding me, asshole. <laughs> look at MTV for music videos. Too busy showing the lives of the high schoolers in Rich Laguna Beach. You have drama. <laughs> I just want to kill myself. <laughs> or VH1 with that crackhead who keeps saying flavor, flavor. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole! You ran out of flavor 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of dating, too. I'm tired. I tried to get dating tips from a stripper friend of mine named Candy. <laughs> you laugh. But my heart's been ripped open. And yet you laugh again. Listen. Never take advice from a stripper. <laughs> and here's my, my philosophy, okay? Ladies out here, I don't know, but if you have huge tits <laughs> and you want to strip, after the show, come show them to me first and I'll tell you whether or not it's a good idea. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't believe in strip clubs. I don't. I've never been to one, never will go to one. You know why? Guys, listen to me and listen clearly. I can stay at home and not get laid for free. <laughs> anyway, she helped me pick out a girl. A girl. We started dating for a while, you know. We. But she sucked. <laughs> Number one, because she had a six-month rule. Six months before we could have sex. Thank you, God, for friends with benefits. <laughs> a couple of you are apprehensive to laugh because you are those friends with benefits. <laughs> but thank you for getting me through a really hard time. Six months came, though. And that would be the first time and the last time we would ever have sex. She looked at me. 
Oh, God, with those doe eyes. God, she looked at me. She did her best strip tease. I was all into it. Then she motioned for me that it was my turn. It was my turn to do my strip pose. So I did my best Chip and Dale's impression I learned from Chris Farley on Saturday night. <laughs> And I got down to my door and I took it off. <laughs> she looked up at me. I'm expecting to hear, come get it, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Was that too graphic for someone? <laughs> Very sorry. You're seeing Kyle Curtis in a whole new light, aren't you? <laughs> get the fuck over and grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of telling me that, she looked at me, looked down at me, and said, wow, it's so cute. <laughs> Ladies in the audience, if you ever take advice from a drunk like me, never. Tell a guy his cock is cute. <laughs> but you know what? I was desperate. <laughs> and me and Cutie went to work anyway. <laughs> and right as I'm to him, I think. <laughs> that makes some of you turn heads, and I like it. <laughs> She grabs my ear, I'm expecting to hear something dirty, and by God, baby, I got it. She said, sweetheart, I forgot to mention, I might have herpes. <laughs> but we didn't start long ago. And I pulled out. Five second rule! <laughs>